Hey everybody, my name's Dave Clark, uh, aka Pattern Guy. Uh, making this little introduction video, um, in the past few years I've had a lot of people ask me to uh, start teaching them the trade that I do. Um, obviously a pattern maker, I don't make dress patterns, I make uh, wood patterns for the casting industry. Um, eventually I'll show you some of those and uh, uh, the different types that we do and that. But get started, uh, I'll tell you all about myself. Um, I tend to ramble a lot, uh, I'll try to keep that to a minimum, but uh, it all started, you know, 1954, my mom and dad came over here from Wales. Uh, my dad was a third generation pattern maker, that makes me a fourth generation pattern maker. Um, came over here, started working for Ford Motor Company in Brook Park, Ohio. Um, he started there in 1954, as I said. Um, when I came along in 1965, uh, he was kind of happy, his uh, only son he had. So when I was about five years old, he always had a shop in his garage. Um, wanted to stick with my dad constantly. You know, I loved him. I loved what you know he was doing. You know, working with wood all the time. I uh, just took an interest in it and literally started doing things when I was five years old. Um, started working on machinery. He made me a deal. He goes, as soon as you hit my boobies. He goes, uh, you know, you can start working on the power equipment. And he's a short guy, so literally five years old, I was on a 14-inch Craftsman bandsaw uh, doing that, and a table saw and that. You know, a couple more years down the road on that one, I was probably about seven or eight when I got on the table saw and that. So I've been working with uh, wood for quite a long time. Uh, you know, in, uh, when I started getting into school, uh, took wood shop in ninth grade and I loved that and was having a good time. Um, in tenth grade, uh, I just happened to go next door was uh, the metal shop and I had to go over there for something. Uh, saw a Bridgeport milling machine. Couldn't believe it. Uh, I'm also a machine junkie. Uh, saw that milling machine, I'm like, oh, I gotta learn how to run that. So in tenth grade, I ended up taking a uh, machine shop instead of a wood shop because I, I was pretty good in the wood shop already. So I figured, hey, I'm going to start learning how to work with metal. So I was taking metal shop and what happened was the original teacher was going to retire the next year. So one of the wood shop teachers came over and started teaching metals. And Mr. Schneider, that's who I was learning metals from. So Mr. Myers, the original guy, he came in, saw what I was doing, and uh, he, he could see a little bit of a, you know, a little bit more than what other guys were doing in that. So he recommended that in 11th grade, I go to machine trades, uh, vocational school. So that year, let's see, my sophomore to junior year, uh, my dad actually met another Welsh guy. He was a pattern maker also. And uh, they kind of got together. Um, guy that I met, his name was Alwyn Price. He's an awesome pattern maker. And him and my dad, uh, Alwyn was working at a pump manufacturing company in the next town over. So uh, sophomore to junior year summer, Alwyn got me a job in the pump company. And they tried to get me in the machine shop as much as they could. Uh, get me familiar with machines and, and things like that. So I uh, got in here a little bit and, and, you know, sweeping floors and, you know, filling orders mostly. I uh, worked in the tool crib and that, but he got me in the machine shop as much as he could. So uh, that year, my, you know, when I went to school, 11th grade, I went to a city a couple, uh, couple doors down from ours and uh, took machine trades and yeah, learned how to work on uh, you know the metal lays, milling machines, uh, we had shapers there, we had pretty much everything. So I did that for my junior year, my senior year in machine trades. Um, I went to my original school for English and math during the morning and then I went over to the next uh, machine trade school in um, the afternoon. About halfway through the year some gentleman came in he was looking for two apprentices. 
So the teacher called myself and another guy up and the uh, guy came to give us a little impromptu interview and he hired us for uh, apprentices. So what we would do is we would go to machine trades do the shop or not the shop we would do the book in part of the the class and then from there instead of going down the shop a couple hours steve and i would go head over to the machine shop and work there i uh, worked there from like one o'clock to six o'clock something like that so then what we ended up doing from there um yeah it was my senior year so i graduated from high school was working there and about halfway through the summer this is in uh, 1983 um, the economy wasn't doing that great. The guy got a little slow, so he laid Steve and I off. Um, that's kind of taking the rest of the summer off. A friend of my dad's actually had a real nice old sailboat. He's looking for a crew. So I started sailing with this guy, and he wanted to quit his job and just get into boating things. So him and I decided to start a boat repair business. So. I started cleaning up my dad's shop and uh, took me a couple weeks to clean it up, got all the machines going, you know, running really good and that. And uh, Ray and I started a boat repair shop and it just never really got off the ground. We did some jobs, but got to the point where Ray just didn't, he didn't want to quit his job. So that kind of fell through. So. I didn't know what I wanted to do for a little while. I didn't know if I wanted to go to college. Mom and Dad said they, you know, help me out with college and that. And uh, started dating my wife at the time. And you know, she was kind of trying to talk me into college. She was going at the time, and it just just wasn't for me. I like you know working with my hands. So she helped me out. She uh, kind of wrote a little letter out, you know, saying that I was seeking a pattern shop apprentice. Uh, pattern making apprentice uh, ship. So we sent at the time, I, we live in Cleveland by the way, um, at the time 1983, uh, I think there was about 32 pattern shops in the area. I sent a letter to every shop and I got a reply from two. Uh, one of them said they weren't hiring apprentices at the time. You know, check back later. Another gentleman called me up and said, hey, uh, I'm going to hire an apprentice, but not right now. It's going to take a little while. So for a few months, you know, I called him once a month, make sure, you know, he's still uh, looking for a guy. I think I started bugging him a little bit too much there, but about six or eight months after an initial contact with him, he called me up one day. I was kind of giving up on him, and he called me up one day. He said, hey, come on down to the shop, and, uh, you know, I think we're, we're getting ready to hire people. So it just happened, he actually was right in Cleveland, and what happened, he moved out to another city that was right next to the town I grew up in. So it's a big aluminum uh, foundry. Uh, they had bought his pattern shop out. Uh, they had a mold and dye shop, and it was a precision mold and dye. And they ended up buying uh, my boss's shop out, and it became precision mold and pattern. So uh, Bob hired me, it was in 1984. Uh, I wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing for a little bit before I uh, you know, started an apprenticeship and that, but uh, you could see that I knew what I was doing. I uh, you know, helped my dad build uh, patterns for a little while in the garage. He used to do stuff on the side. So when I was about 14 years old, uh, my dad and Ellen actually um, started doing some patterns in the garage. I would help him out in that so I knew a little bit about what I was doing so Bob gave me an apprenticeship a couple months after I was at Arrow and uh, we had to do five years 10,000 hours um, I was lucky I got credit for um, 2,000 hours which was a year um, I went through a state run apprenticeship so um, it really didn't make too much more you know it was just a pay grade difference like you know just basically made top rate in a year earlier so but I, that was nice too so i stayed at arrow until um yeah i was there uh i became the foreman uh oh, when did i become the foreman like 1984 i became the foreman there and like uh, there was eight of us all together um you know when i first started there the foreman was an old german guy 
Now this is where I got lucky in my trade. I started learning from two Welsh guys and uh, when I started doing my formal training, I'll never forget the first day I was, uh, you know, come in the shop and an old German guy came up to me and says, hey, you want to be pattern maker? And I'm like, yeah, I want to be a pattern maker. He goes, pattern making, he goes, 10% here, he goes, 90% here. I'm like, dude, you got to know a lot of stuff to be a pattern maker. And it took me about five years to figure out that, yeah, it's, it's here. If you want to be a good tradesman, craftsman, it, it's here. It, it's all there. So, you know, it took me a little bit to realize, but, you know, I became good at what I do. But, you know, one of the biggest things is, is uh, I had good training. I had um, European guys are unbelievable craftsmen. So I had the best of the best training me. Um, you know, that, that's where I think I looked out big time. I think it's in my blood. I'm a fourth generation pattern maker to it. it. It's a little bit in there too, you know. So anyhow, they could see that I could do things, take care of myself. So when Joe left, uh, old German guy Joe retired and I, I took his place, became the foreman. I had, what, seven guys underneath me. Actually, I was 27 at the time. Uh, man, I think most of the guys were in their mid-50s. So just, just one other guy, a buddy of mine, he was, uh, I got him an apprenticeship there. He, he, was, uh, he was the only one younger than me at the time there. So it was kind of daunting, you know, telling older guys how to do things and what to do, you know, especially most of the guys I apprenticed under too. So it was... Uh, it was a task, but I got through it, and then uh, got to the point where uh, the guy I got the apprenticeship for, Jeff, Jeff and I grew up together, a little story about him, uh, we grew up together, Jeff's a year younger than me, you're in three days younger than me, and his dad used to take us to a uh, car show here in Cleveland, it's called the Autorama, we used to do that every year, so it's, it was around the time of Jeff's and I's birthday, so... Jeff's dad would take us out of Rama every year for our birthdays. So the one year we were gone, and uh, Jack turns around, and he goes, hey, you're 21 this year. And I said, yeah. He goes, okay, you're going to join the auxiliary. You know, Jack was the captain of the auxiliary police department in the town that we grew up in. So I'm like, ah, geez, I don't know, Jack. What is, you know, he goes, no, just put an application in. You, you know, we'll get you in here. So in 1986... Uh, joined the auxiliary police department, um, did that part-time, you know, I was in the police department two times a month, something like that, you know, did training, uh, you know, rode around with the police officers, assisted them as much as they could, so did that until 1999, so 13 years of that, and uh, had a good time with that, a little bit of police experience in here, uh, but back to the pattern making, I was working at Aero Aluminum until uh, about, yeah, I think I was there till 95, and then I, uh, ended up getting into, um, actually what happened was when I was working at Arrow, uh, the plant manager's office was a disaster, so I was an apprentice at the time, um, they had me go repanel his office. And we were doing it during work hours, and I really didn't want to do construction work during, um, I wanted to learn how to make patterns. I wanted to be working in the shop. So what I ended up doing was um, I asked my boss, I said, hey, how about instead of me doing this during work, how about if I do it, you know, in the evenings or on the weekends or, or whatever? So he said, well, let's ask, uh, you know, the vice president. So the guy that, you know, was uh, having me do the job. So that was okay by him. And then he said, yeah, I'll just give you 500 bucks. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I was in there the first Saturday I was working in there. I needed some help. So I called my best friend, Tony, up. Tony and I graduated, you know, we'd known each other forever, graduated from school together. We had actually started doing a little bit of carpentry together, um, junior to senior year of summer. I was going out with a girl. Actually, lived across the street from Tony. Uh, her mom was a widow, 
and uh, her garage roof needed replacing and she couldn't afford to get it done. So in working with my dad, my dad used to do a lot of carpentry uh, on the side as well as pattern making. I knew a little bit about carpentry, so Tony said, hey, we, well, let's fix uh, the roof, you know. So Tony said, all right, we'll do that. So we're fixing the roof, and next door neighbor comes over and says, hey, he goes, can you fix my porch for us? So Tony and I started doing some carpentry jobs, and, and, and uh, we liked it a lot. Um, kind of thinking about, you know, right out of high school, getting into a construction business, but he kind of went to school. And that. So what happened was uh, when I was redoing the plant manager's office, uh, I needed some help. So I called Tony up and said, hey, look, you got offered $500 to panel this office. I need help. You know, I want to come over and we'll split it. So Tony came out, helped me out, split the money. So when we got done with that job, the vice president of the company comes up and says, hey, look, I need a little office over here. Can you build that? Okay, you know, so Tony and I did that. Well, it got to the point where Tony and I started doing a lot of construction work on the side. Uh, as about 1989-ish, 1980-1989, my mom and dad built a house. So Tony and I were helping on the house a lot. Got to learn a lot more. Uh, halfway through the framing, uh, the construction company that... Uh, my dad hired, they ended up quitting halfway through the job, so Tony and I finished framing and that, and then we just started doing a lot of uh, carpentry stuff on the side from our, our regular jobs. So I was doing my apprenticeship and it was um, finishing up my apprenticeship and that and doing construction on the side and working at the police department here and there. So Tony and I actually got to the point where we started doing a lot of construction work. In uh, about 1989, we, we actually became a construction company on the side. In uh, about 1989, I was at a buddy of mine's shop, uh, he had an auto body shop, and the guy that he was renting the building from had an excavating business, and he had all his equipment stored out in the back. So I was over there visiting Kevin the one day, and uh, I forget, Kevin was busy at the time, so I was roaming around looking at all the excavating equipment, excavators, bulldozers, and that. And all of a sudden, some guy started yelling at me. I got a little scared, and the guy turned around, he's laughing, and he goes, uh, he goes, oh, I just had to do that to you. So I just started talking to the guy. He was actually the owner of the... Uh, excavating you know business that, that was there and as I started talking to him and that ended up that he put a package deal together and bought a bunch of excavating equipment from him, uh, Tony and I so the, the goal for Tony and I was Tony was going to do the carpentry aspect of the construction business I was going to do the excavating so I, I actually worked with the excavating guy for the summer to learn how to run everything and that and then uh, after that, you know, we, we started doing excavating on our own, too. So in 1990, I got married, uh, still working full-time, doing the pattern making, and then Tony and I on the side were doing uh, not only carpentry, we were doing excavating now, too. And a couple times a month, I headed into the police department to work. And that, so it's, uh, we grew construction-wise. Um, we did that until... Uh, 1999, or no, yeah, 1999. Uh, well, in 1989, uh, we were uh, living in a different town, and I'd get together with the neighborhood guys, play poker every Friday night. We had a new guy come in, new neighbor, see if he wanted to play poker. Now, that evening it was at my house, and the uh, guy came in, looked around the living room, might have redone the house. And he's like, oh my God, who did, you know, all this carpentry in here? I said, oh, I did. And he's like, oh, you a carpenter? I said, well, told him I did it part-time, you know, pattern maker full-time. He's like, oh, dude, I got to hire you. And I said, oh, what do you do? He says, well, I own a carpentry business, a union carpentry business and that. So I didn't do it at first. I, I love pattern making when I stay in that. But 
a few weeks later, I had a falling out with my boss at the pattern shop I was working at. It just happened that evening, we're playing poker. And I asked Jim, he, uh, you know, the job offer's still open. He's like, hell yeah. So he got me into Union Carpentry. Uh, started doing that in like, I think it was like 98, I think I started doing that. 97, 98, somewhere in there. So I was in uh, Carpentry for about a year. And here what happened was I had put my application in at Ford Motor Company in the foundry at a big iron foundry in Brook Park. That's where my dad worked for 38 years. Um, I put my application in well, about eight years before that and uh, got home from work that evening uh, doing carpentry and my wife is like, oh, she goes, hey, Ford just called, they want you to come in for an interview tomorrow. So ended up getting a job at Ford Motor Company. So it was, that was it. I, I had it made. Uh, Ford, that was a, oh. Uh, you know, for a working guy, it's the best thing that ever happened, you know. So we ended up, Tony started, he had some family deals, you know, we had young kids. He wanted to start spending time with his kids. I uh, wanted to start spending more time with my kids. So we ended up selling the construction company, all the equipment and that. And, uh, you know, I just worked at my full-time job and, and Tony worked at his full-time job. I ended up resigning from the police department because it just, uh, I was working afternoons at Ford and that's when I usually worked at the police station. So begrudgingly, I, I, I didn't want to quit there, but I ended up resigning from the police department. So I worked at Ford for, oh man, I was there till 07. They ended up, um, I was kind of hoping I'd be able to retire from there, but unfortunately they, they closed the plant. So in the 07, they, they said that they were going to close the plant. They were offering buyouts. So I talked it over with my wife in that, and I figured, you know, what I was tired of making other people money doing what I was doing. So I figured, hey, you know, we're just going to, I'm just going to open up my own shop. So. Um, I just got done building a house. Uh, my wife and I built a house in a different city. So I just got done building the house and everything and I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna, you know, get going in my own business. So I took some of the buyout money that I had, bought some equipment and that, and uh, started a pattern shop. And I've been doing that ever since. Um, I think about five or six years into it, my sister's a teacher at a school. She called me up one day. They were getting rid of their shop classes. So I went there and uh, ended up buying all their founder equipment also. Uh, founder equipment was uh, really inexpensive. So I ended up picking that up. And I wasn't able to get that going until uh, about 2015, 2016. Uh, a friend of mine bought a big building right in Cleveland and had a little room in there it's 14 feet by 28 feet and we're talking about the furnaces and stuff that one day i couldn't set it up you know in the shop that i have and we'll show you in a later video I'm, I'm, my shop's in my garage so and it's full so um didn't have room for the furnaces there so you know dean invited me to uh you know, put all my equipment and uh, the foundry equipment in this 14 by 28 foot room. So I've been in there for the last three or four years. I've, I've had the foundry going. So uh, if I can get these videos going a little bit, we'll take you down there and we'll show you some foundry work also. So that's basically all my experiences in that. And uh, what I plan to do is I've had so many people ask me, to show them how to do pattern making and that, and I was really hesitant of doing something like this. I, I'm really pretty camera shy, believe it or not. But um, I figured I, I'm getting old and I want to start teaching people this craft. It's a dying trade, but I feel you're still going to need, there's still going to be need for us. Um, you know, CNC equipment's taken over a lot of the stuff and that, but it's still, uh, I do everything old school, bandsaw, sanders, you know, things like that. So I want to teach you what the old German guy told me. 
I'm going to try to teach people how to be a good craftsman. And that's what you, uh, I think the ultimate goal is, um, you know, be, be, be the best craftsman you can. Uh, try to learn as much as you can through what you can. But what I'll do is uh, I'm going to start out with some basic woodworking at first. Uh, one of the important things that I, I noticed in the shops that I've worked in, I've worked in five different pattern shops. And anytime we have an apprentice in there, they just basically give them a drawing and show them how to make a pattern. Well, they never show them woodworking. So it's very important to know what you're doing woodworking wise. And then uh, from there, you can make patterns. So I'll teach you how to do some woodworking. Um, I'm a fair machinist. We'll, we'll do some machining, show you how to do some machining. I do do some little small production machining for a couple of customers. Um, learn as much as you can. I'll try to teach you as much as I can. I can do a little bit of welding. Um, you know, machine repair. Uh, I can't afford to have a machine repair guy come here. So teach you some machines, machinery, machine repair. Um, you know, there's right now another good friend of mine, another pattern maker. We actually worked at Aero Aluminum together. Um, I quit there, he stayed. Uh, I got hired at Ford, he got hired at Ford about three years after I hired in there. And we ended up becoming partners there at Ford. So, uh, just great friend of mine, really good pattern maker. Um, he basically you know, says, because there's nothing that we really can't make. I mean, we can make a lot of things. So I'm going to teach you as much as I can. Um, you know, one of the big things that I do too is, uh, I forgot to mention, is um, about five miles from my house there's a rideable steam train club. So I joined that a few years ago. I always love trains. Who doesn't love trains? I had the heavy equipment, so now i got to do the train thing. So I joined that club. Well, all those things are is it's castings and, you know, machining. So we got, we can make the patterns for the locomotives. We can cast them in the foundry, and then we can machine them, and then we got our locomotives. So that's another thing, you know, we'll, we'll touch upon all that stuff when we get going. But what I'm planning on doing, hopefully, I'm going to try to get a video out. Right now, we'll plan for every other week, if I can get it to the point where I can do it once a week. You know, I'll get a weekly video. Um, I work, so, you know, I got my own business, so I'm working a lot. Um, then what I want to do, if I can get it once a week, I want to try to get it to be once a week one, uh, once I get going here. Uh, I'm not really into the technology too, too much. i got to have help with me for that. So try to get a video out for you once a week uh, down the road. Um, down, you know, if you guys have questions, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to start out basic, but then I'll add a little thing for guys that know a little bit about what they're doing also to keep it a little interesting but I want to start out from zero you know and uh, you know try to get you guys to you know eventually be a good pattern maker and good foundry person down the road and possibly a machinist or welder too so hopefully we'll see you in the next week or two and uh, till then hey, have a good one